Hello. Today we're going to talk about the Ulm School of Design, which ran in Germany between 1953 and 68. It was, uh, I think, one of my favorite design schools historically uh, because it set the tone for what industrial design education would become in large part. So I don't really have books, but I have two catalogs from an exhibition at Raven Row in London that was set up in 2016. And they give a really good background to what the school would have been like. So it was a school set up in Ulm in Germany, in rural Germany, and uh, it kind of produced works that would influence other designers in lots of different ways, whether that was architectural, product-based, um, some amazing kind of stackable tableware that I think everybody can recognize from probably their grandparents' house. Stackable ashtrays that are kind of a design classic, again. Uh, and a lot of the work that was the most famous was done by a student called Hans Gugelow. The school was set up by a couple. Uh, they had trialed uh, post-war, immediately post-war, they trialed adult education uh, to bring, again, that kind of trade school approach um, into getting people to retrain and also bring together the arts. But uh, that ended up being a more comprehensive application for funding for um, Marshall Plan money, so American money. So in their first curriculum, they offered not only sculpture and architecture and product design, uh, but they also offered journalism and graphic design and political communication, because in order to have access to that money, they needed to really uh, say that this was going to help de-radicalize Germany. So I think that the history behind the school is really interesting. Um, they also had, so the uh, co-founder, Eutel Eicher, became a very famous figure in graphic design, but people sort of know a little bit less about the work that um, he'd done setting up the school. His wife was absolutely key in the funding application and the actual paperwork running of the school, which is a big job in itself. Um, and the work of Hans Gugelo, that student, um, became very uh, important to the work of Dieter Rams. So Dieter Rams, some of you may know, um, and this is the giant publication I have, which is quite a big sort of history of Dieter Rams's work. He was a very famous industrial designer, but his initial work was done in collaboration with the school. And so all of the early designs for um, radio, audio kind of combinations was done uh, with the school, radio designs. Uh, this one here is uh, from Ulm. And so that relationship between Braun and Ulm is obviously very key to his career and his work. He, of course, goes on to kind of do a lot of independent work as an independent designer hired by Braun that is um, also very important in kind of designing classical pieces, uh, whether that is uh, the base, the basis really for a lot of Apple's uh, iconography, I think has always been uh, what people have always felt about his work. So very clean lines, very beautiful, uh, very minimalistic. Um, and this publication is kind of quite heavy, quite, quite comprehensive. It will go into quite a lot of technical details and technical views of products. I also got to visit the archives, both Ulm and also the archives of Braun outside of um, Frankfurt, and it's really worth going to. It's a, quite a large collection of things that you can see. It's just an incredible company that's worked um, historically across so many different sectors and building products which you and I have probably forgotten about, but really beautiful things. So yeah. Boom and Dieter Rams, two things to Google during your Easter holiday. Enjoy.